Today's webinar is going to look at cell requirements. So all cells require energy. Now, energy is needed um, for movement, for example. Most cells can move or change shape, and energy is required in that sense. Um, examples of that could be things like sperm cells um, when they swim for several days, when your muscles contract, um, you know, it requires movement and that needs energy. Um, a lot of things like um, chromosomes that move in mitosis um, require energy, and mitosis is a thing we're going to mention next week when we're looking at cell division. Um, just packaging and secreting substances in the body require energy. A movement of your plasma membrane in endo and hematocytosis require energy also. So all of those processes which have movement in it require energy. The other um, main reason why we, cells require energy is synthesis. So it needs to break down or build up molecules. So um, production of variety of molecules that involve conversion of one type of energy to another. Um, like a uh, photosynthesis, for example, which we'll talk about this week, um, a bit later in this webinar. The other one is when endocrine cells produce hormones, um, it requires energy as well. When cells undergo DNA replication or protein synthesis, um, basically just um, energy is required to break down and also build up molecules, like I mentioned before. Um, and by performing these tasks, the cells, cells can then grow, repair, and reproduce and function normally. Now, a stable internal environment is also very important. Um, if we were out in the sort of um, world and you know, things got cold, we will shiver, and that's to maintain a stable um, temperature in our body. So even though our body is changing to meet those needs, it is doing so to keep us warm. So if it's too cold, we shiver. If it's too hot, we sweat. And those processes require energy um, to maintain that temperature. Um, we also need to maintain um, correct solute balance and sometimes active transportation is needed in that case. Um, osmosis obviously doesn't require um, energy, but when you're going against the concentration gradient, we require active um, transport, which is part of movement as well, um, but helps to maintain a stable environment. Um, things like maintaining uh, good concentrations of waste products and things that you need, so making sure that you don't have too much build up of carbon dioxide and other toxic um, things in your body require energy to remove them or uh, produce things that you actually need. So um, there are um, things, organisms which we call uh, energy producers. Now they are organisms which um, are capable of producing their own energy and we call them autotrophs because they automatically make their own energy in, in the sense that it, it doesn't need much else. Um, so there are two types. We've got um, your chemosynthetic autotrophs and your photosynthetic autotrophs. Most of you probably would have heard of photosynthetic autotrophs before, not so much chemosynthetic. So let's look at chemosynthetic autotrophs first. Now, um, chemosynthetic autotrophs derive or um, get their energy from inorganic sources like sulfur or ammonia. It, um, the example I've got here is it being sulfur as that inorganic substance um, with your uh, carbon, which is dioxide, organic compound, and um, water. And that produces a sugar compound, C6H12O6 is sugar. Um, you don't need to know these, these chemical formulas, you just need to know um, that it's a process which can actually produce um, energy being sugar and a byproduct that is some sulfur compounds. Now an example of um, photosynthetic, uh, so chemosynthetic autotrophs are bacteria. Um, not all bacteria, but um, some. And they tend to mainly be organisms which live, um, uh, they can be found in some areas like the ocean trenches like where you don't get a lot of sunlight so they have to rely on um, uh, getting energy from a different chemical reaction. Now photosynthetic autotrophs are probably more common um, and you probably would have heard of them because they're more common. 
So they convert light energy into chemical energy um, instead of just the chemical into chemical. Um, so plants, algae, and some bacteria and some precious um, are examples of uh, photosynthetic autotrophs. But well, most of you would just know plants um, as a main one if there's lots of them around. So they get their energy from the sun. Sunlight energy absorbed by um, pigments, green pigments in the plant, which then can convert the energy into um, sugar. Now, in plants, photosynthesis takes place in a membrane bound organelle called chloroplasts. So, chloroplasts um, are, are like, well, they contain a green pigment called chlorophyll, which is why plants are green. Um, and in photosynthetic bacteria, the reactions um, take place in the cell itself, not within these particular discrete organelles. But um, most other photosynthetic water shows um, do um, undergo this reaction inside the, the chloroplast. Ah, well, they, uh, they convert it in the chloroplast. So um, the upper leaf, surface of the leaves contain those chloroplasts. And um, like I said, it has a green pigment called chlorophyll. There's little pigments there. So through photosynthesis, the plant can make glucose, um, which is a form of sugar. Um, and as a byproduct, it can also produce oxygen. So the process starts with sunlight. Um, you need sunlight, which is absorbed um, and taken into um, by the, the chlor chlorophyll pigments. And you need water which is taken up um, by the roots and it also needs carbon dioxide through um, stomata which I'll show you later what that looks like. Now with these um, these four things, sunlight, water, the chlorophyll pigments and the carbon dioxide, you can produce the glucose which then gets delivered to the rest of the plant cells and oxygen is also produced and released through the stomata. So carbon dioxide enters the stomata, water and oxygen leaves the stomata. So in general you need to know this formula um, in words, so carbon dioxide plus water along with sunlight and chlorophyll which is the green pigment um, can produce glucose and oxygen. So the arrow shows you um, that, can, that conversion, that carbon dioxide and water is being converted into glucose, um, glucose and oxygen and that sunlight and chlorophyll is also needed. Now photosynthesis is the action of transforming that sunlight energy into chemical energy. So photosynthesis produces energy for use by autotrophs and which is then later used um, down the food chain by other organisms which consume these um, autotrophs and um, oxygen gas which is essential for the survival of other um, advanced life forms which will um, look at why that is later on. So heterotrophs are organisms, organisms which make their own energy. Um, so all animals, fungi and some bacteria are examples of heterotrophs. Now you've got two types as well. You've got your chemosynthetic heterotrophs which consume other organisms to obtain the energy and carbon, carbon sources and you've got your photosynthetic heterotrophs which are able to convert light energy but still require some organic compounds like carbon. And, um, so there are some bacteria which are photoheterotrophs. Um, most of you will see them as kidney synthetic heterotrophs. So every organism in the food chain is fully dependent on energy supplied by photosynthesis. Um, nearly all organisms obtain their energy directly or indirectly from sunlight. Um, so getting the understanding that by a few exceptions um, we all really rely on the sun um, because the sun is required um, by autotrophs to make energy from photosynthesis which then we eat those plants or other organisms eat those plants which then we eat. So we rely heavily on those order shows. So energy is continually being transformed from one energy into another um, through the law of conservation of energy. So light, heat, chemical and kinetic energy can all change um, 
um, its form. So it, it doesn't really get destroyed, it just changes from one form to another, but it's more usable um, for a particular organism. Now, cellular respiration is um, basically the opposite of uh, photosynthesis. So cellular respiration is the process by which we break down molecules like glucose to release energy for synthesis of ATP. Now, ATP is the cell's um, usable form of energy, and um, it's needed in pretty much every cell, including plants and animals. So, and most of those reactions occur in the mitochondria. Now, two forms. Um, you've got your aerobic respiration, which requires oxygen, and anaerobic respiration, which doesn't require oxygen. Now, most organisms will undergo aerobic respiration where possible, and only re uh, resort to anaerobic respiration um, when there's a lack of oxygen or no oxygen present. Um, so, for example, when you're exercising really vigorously, you will eventually undergo some, a little bit of anaerobic respiration, just to try and you know, keep producing energy even though you're tired because you're not breathing in as much oxygen as you need to make that energy. So oxygen which we breathe in, um, it gets formed, we know is formed from um, photosynthetic organisms through the process of photosynth uh, photosynthesis. We also need a, um, energy through glucose, which is um, sugar from food that we eat. That then releases energy um, from mitochondria through res uh, respiration. We know respiration, respiration occurs in the mitochondria. That um, energy released is in the form of what we call ATP, the cell's usable form of energy, um, and also produces byproducts like carbon dioxide and water vapor. So you need to know the formula, which is just really easy because it's opposite of photosynthesis, except that it's got ATP at the end. So glucose plus oxygen gets converted into carbon dioxide plus water and ATP, which is the cell's usable form of energy. So you can see here, it's basically two opposing or opposite things which um, work together. So um, remember plants can only um, undergo, photo, uh, well, they can, they're the only ones that can undergo photosynthesis but they can also undergo aerobic respiration. So water is required by plants, um, along with sunlight and the chlorophyll pigments. Um, and you also need, uh, can you put carbon dioxide in there with me? Um, anyway, so that produces glucose and oxygen. The glucose and oxygen then is used um, in, by the mitochondrion um, to produce ATP, which is usable energy for cells. Um, that produces carbon dioxide and water, which is needed by um, the chloroplasts, um, uh, which are found in plant cells to produce glucose and oxygen, which is then, and so the cycle goes around and around and around. Um, the other form, like I mentioned, was anaerobic respiration. So when we are short of oxygen, um, we undergo this process, but um, like I said, it produces much less energy, and so it's not as efficient. So for Every molecule of glucose, it only produces around about um, two ATP molecules, um, as opposed to um, 36 or 38 ATP molecules um, in aerobic respiration. But if you're lacking in energy and you need to produce it and there's no oxygen, well, you're going to have to undergo anaerobic respiration. It also produces lactic acid, and it's probably one of the reasons why you feel um, sore once you've done lots of vigorous exercise and training, because that lactic um, acid um, indirectly then affects your muscles afterwards and makes them feel sore. So when you've you've actually you know really pushed your body to, to the limit, that soreness um, comes from that um, buildup of lactic acid. Now the other um, form of anaerobic respiration is fermentation, and it occurs in these cells. Um, so fermentation produces alcohol and carbon dioxide. It's one of the reasons why when I stored some grapes in a container and left it for ages um, and it broke down under because you know, it was airtight, there was no oxygen. Um, basically, uh, I ended up producing um, uh, alcohol because the, the grapes smelled like alcohol. And that's how 
um, alcohol is made it's from fermentation of um, basically um, grapes. So glucose will break down to form ATP, um, produce uh, ethanol, which is an alcohol, and carbon dioxide as well. Now, um, you also need to know that um, in the body you have excretion of metabolic waste as well. So other than obviously producing things that you need, we produce waste. So carbon dioxide is a waste product of all cells. Um, so remember, um, plants also undergo aerobic respiration and aerobic respiration produces carbon dioxide as a waste product. Um, obviously in photosynthesis um, in plants, you then use that carbon dioxide to make the glucose, which then makes more carbon dioxide later. But um, generally we say carbon dioxide is a waste product, especially for um, heterotrophs. So it needs to be removed and um, gets removed through the lung. So we breathe it out. Um, and obviously it's very useful in that cycle, um, which we'll talk about later. So urea is another um, uh, metabolic waste. Um, basically it gets, it's a breakdown of amino acids into ammonia, which then gets, um, you know, further um, broken down into urea, which that occurs in the liver. And then urea is then transported to the kidneys where it gets filtered, um, goes through a filtration process and um, uh, forms a urine, which is then, you know, travels through the ureter, as you can see here, into your bladder, and it's excreted. And so that's when you, you go and have a pee. Um, so that process, um, but all of these processes require the circuitry system to move these products through your body, um, and without um, eliminating these wastes which are really toxic in your body, um, you can get quite sick um, and you can die from the, the, the build up. Now if we compare material requirements of these cells, we can see that um, in uh, the heterotrophs, carbon dioxide, um, we know carbon dioxide is um, basically a uh, waste product, but Heterotrophs basically require the glucose. So if we go back to uh, sorry, this here, you can see that um, the requirements that heterotrophs have is that they they need glucose and oxygen, okay, to produce the the ATP. Autotrophs and they require well glucose and oxygen too for um, this process here. Um, when they undergo aerobic respiration, but initially without photosynthesis, they can't undergo aerobic respiration at all. So on top of that, they also need water, um, sunlight, and um, carbon dioxide, as well as the chloroplast pigments, which are already present in their plant cells. So their their needs are slightly more in that sense. Um, both um, heterotrophs and autotrophs also require um, organic and inorganic substances, so um, plants require like inorganic nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, magnesium, cobalt and other trace elements in order to um, basically um, use for other processes in the body, uh, in the organism, in the plant cell. Um, a lot of those nutrients uh, get dissolved in, um, in the soil and absorbed by like root hairs of plant cells. Whereas in um, heterotrophs, we typically need a wide range of um, uh, organic molecules and inorganic molecules. So things like proteins, carbohydrates, fats, oils, um, amino acids, and um, water, and some mineral ions and vitamins in order to function. So we have uh, slightly more, I guess, as heterotrophs um, requirements in that sense. <laughs>